Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad that you're here today. I'm excited to be here with you and worship the Lord our God. Uh, we have uh, a lot of new people back here that have come to uh, church today because of Walter, and uh, we're excited about that and uh, looking forward to what part of the service we're going to do with him uh, a little later in the day. Uh, I want to uh, make several announcements as we get ready to worship the Lord this morning. Uh, we need your 16-ounce dairy tubs for uh, uh, Vacation Bible School, so you can see pictures up here behind me of what you would be bringing. And if you will, just drop those off in the kitchen on the table, and uh, the, the people that are interested in having those will go ahead and pick them up there. So bring them, drop them off in the kitchen. We'd love to have those dairy tubs. They'll help us out. Um, I don't have any control. You need to put a cursor on that deal and click it one time. There you go. We'll, we'll just see if I've got it now. I don't yet. Okay. That's cool. Wednesday, our regular Wednesday program is, uh, of course, a 525 dinner and a 6 o'clock Bible study. And uh, so be coming out for that. Uh, when we do Wednesday night, go to the next slide for me, please. Uh, on Wednesday night for the adults, we're having a, a pretty neat study. I just love the way it's dovetailing into uh, Easter time. All of, our, all of our things are really still dovetailed into Easter. You'll see that we've left all of our decoration up because we want you to be remembering the, the resurrection. The sermon today is about the resurrection and uh, it's actually from John also. And so we've got some real nice dovetailing going on between uh, our Easter season and how, how we've just sort of arrived at this at the right time in the book of John as we study. So it's really neat to see happening. Um, our next slide, please. Uh, board meeting, May 4th. Next one. Bowling today at 4.30. Uh, Please see me, if you're going bowling, see me at, directly after uh, church. Everybody's welcome. Anybody that wants to go is welcome to go bowling. But I, I like to get a head count as we uh, uh, get ready to go this afternoon, how many are going and all. So uh, touch base with me after services, and we'll, we'll see to that. Next, prayer breakfast, Saturday, May 7th. Uh, that's coming up here in, what, about two weeks, so... Uh, be ready for that. Uh, don't need that one or that one. Okay, prayer requests. This is where we, we want to look at the things that we're asking God for. And I, I want you to be with me. I want you to be praying actually these same things for yourself and for those who are around you, for those that you don't see here, be praying for these things. God, please give us greater commitment to you uh, through the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we love him, help us to be more committed to you than ever before. Help us decide, you know, today I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And then keep your mind, let's pray that God will help us keep our minds on those, on those goals and on those uh, targets. And, and keep those decisions, those commitments to the Lord. Uh, Wednesday night, I'm praying for Wednesday night. And more people will come because I'm, I'm convinced that there's a lot of really neat stuff going on on Wednesday night for people to learn, both children and adults. And uh, uh, Sharon and Tammy are having a good uh, class uh, on Wednesday night for the kids. So you need to come out to that. Bring your kids out. Uh, repentance. We need to have repentance, real repentance, where we decide, you know what? My life has to be after the Lord Jesus. And then we have to pray. I want us to be praying for others to do that same thing, that they will have that same kind of commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the prayer request things that I have. I do have one more uh, announcement that I want to have uh, made before we uh, get into the kind of uh, call to worship time. If you are needing things ordered, uh, if you're a VBS uh, staff member and you're needing things ordered, uh, please get a list of those things together and then bring them with you next Sunday because next Sunday after service, we're going to have a VBS meeting. So uh, be ready for that next Sunday to bring 
your uh, vacation Bible school needs lists with you, and uh, we'll we'll have a, a meeting uh, following services next Sunday. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Call to worship, and then if you will, just follow along as I read through this. I'll, everybody, stand with me, if you will. First Corinthians 15:20 20 through 23. We're going to read this. Read with me. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. After that, those who are Christ's at his coming. Okay, uh, we have a prayer now, and, and I think Jerry's going to lead us in prayer, and then Jim's going to lead us in song. So let's bow together and pray as we open our service. Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful day. Praise our Lord. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself. Heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Now we see how great, how great. Amazing grace, how 
Our memory work, uh, James 1, 2 through 4. I hope you're liking this uh, verse, and I hope it's helping you throughout your week as you're thinking about this verse and letting it minister to you. Uh, it, can, it can make you a stronger person. 
so let's keep reading this and thinking about it together. Read with me, and uh, I'm going to ask you, Melinda, to keep turning the page for us, uh, since I don't seem to have uh, the control up here to do that. So uh, let's read together. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. All right, very good. Now let's continue our worship in song this morning. He Keeps Me Singing is our next song. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 5. And uh, if you have uh, a desire to read out of the, the hymnal your music, well, it's, it's there. It's in the... In your hymnal on page 377, he keeps me singing. What a great song. I hope it's a happy song for you. It sure is for me. Let's sing happy. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with me. Peace be still. In all of life's heaven. going to continue singing uh, just a bit more as we sing our communion hymn. I love to tell the story, verses 1, 2, and 4. The story we tell, what is that story we tell? We tell the story of Jesus, how he came and suffered and died for us, and that uh, having died, he rose from the dead. And really, that's a great intro to our, our, uh, our, our time around the Lord's table, because this Lord's table with the bread and the cup, they also tell the story of Jesus, and we do that every time we meet around the table. Let's sing uh, I Love to Tell the Story, 435 in your hymnals, verses 1, 2, and 4. I love to tell the story
read from 1 Corinthians 10, beginning at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. People sometimes wonder why it is that the church, being a spiritual institution, places such an emphasis on physical acts and physical objects used in worship. Baptism is a physical act. The money that is collected is a physical object. The church building is physical. The Christ we worship was a physical person. However, the physical is only a vehicle for the spiritual. The meaning lies not in what you see and witness in the church service, rather what you witness in the church service helps you see more deeply the meaning of a truly spiritual life. The beauty is not in the offering you put in the plate, but in you as an offering person. All of that which you see in here is a means to a spiritual end, not merely an end into itself. So the Son of God came so that men could see him as the Christ. Some, however, see him only as Jesus of Nazareth. The emblems of the communion service, some see merely the unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine. Others see the purity of Christ's life and the supreme sacrifice he made for us. Those who are wise learn that there is much more to life than meets the eye. The Lord's Supper is for the wise. Let's pray. Our Father, help us to see clearly the beautiful meaning hidden in the symbols of this holy communion service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, please uh, bless this offering and bless everyone who gives cheerfully and happily to our church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. appreciate it very much. This morning we'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 14. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you. Which also you receive, and which also you stand. By which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you. Unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than five hundred brethren at one time most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, But I labored even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Whether any of us hide or lay, so we preach, and so you believe. Now if Christ is preached that he has raised from the dead. How many sons among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain, your faith also is vain.
Thank you, Mary. That was very beautiful. We appreciate it so much. Great message in song. Uh, lovely to, to know that God's eye is on the sparrow, he promised, and I know he watches me. What a great thing to have as part of your knowledge. Uh, I want to see if we can get our, our uh, slideshow to work, so I'm going to spend about a minute back here and see if it will, and then uh, we'll carry on with or without uh, the result. Let me see what we got here. shows a full charge on the, it has a little reader that comes up whenever. Let's see if that might be it. Who knows, maybe taking them out of there would have been a good idea anyway. Gonna reset it. find time to leave me, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> All right. Miss Melinda, you and me, okay? <laughs> this means up one, and this one means go back one, okay? <laughs> so up one, there we go. That Thomas, we're going to talk about Thomas in the 20th chapter of the book of John. We're going to do a lot of reading at the front end, Melinda, so it's going to go pretty quickly until we get clear down there to where uh, the first, you'll see the first block letters, like John 20 says here, you'll see those kind of letters where I've made a comment. That's probably about where we're going to stop, uh, so we'll have a long read through at first. Um, before we get started on John 20, I want to just let you know that part of the reason we're doing the entire chapter is I'd like to set the scene. I want you to be able to see that Thomas doesn't come to the things that he says sort of like, well, this is just the kind of guy he is and he doesn't really have any call for saying the things that he does and acting as he does. Maybe you know the story of Thomas and know something about what I'm talking about. If not, you're going to learn this morning because it's all there in our, our, our uh, lesson, our Bible lesson tonight, or this morning. I'm getting a little confused because I got a song up there instead of a scripture. So <laughs> let's, let's see how that goes. Uh, what's, I need to get back to my sermon somehow. If not, I'm going to get my Bible out from my pocket, and we're just going to leave the, the, uh, te the text on the overhead alone. Maybe that would be the best thing. Let's just, let's just preach without any up notes in the front of us tonight, this morning. All right, I, want to, I want to make it night. I guess I didn't get enough sleep. Uh, John, the 20th chapter, reads this way. Uh, I need to get a, a correct translation. I've been working through King James with my wife. We're going to go to New American Standard. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already moved from the tomb. So she ran, she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So uh, Peter and the other disciple, oh, do you have one that works? Okay. Wow. There we go. 
It says, so she came, she ran and came to uh, Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple went forth, and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. Uh, and I, there's, a, there's actually a painting that I just really love, and I, I didn't get it into the mix this morning, but it, it just pictures Peter and John racing to the tomb. And uh, John's quite a lot younger, and so they have him unshaven, or rather, you know, actually would be shaven without a beard, let's say. And uh, Peter's a little older and grizzled, and he's trying to keep up with John. And it's just a neat p painting. It shows on their faces this, what is going on? Oh, my goodness. I is it true? Could it be true that he actually did get up from the dead? You know, that sense of, of, in their face as they go along. So I love that painting. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And so Simon Peter also came following him. Uh, see, he's behind, he's older. And he, he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the face cloth, which had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So it's all very neat and tidy and like somebody got up. It wasn't like somebody stole the body, which a lot of people said, uh, but instead it was all neat and orderly and like somebody had gotten up and made their bed, basically, and left. So the other disciple had first come to the tomb, then also entered, and he saw and believed. So John comes in, and he sees that Jesus is gone, and he knows, both of them know, that Jesus has been saying, look, I'm going to get up from the dead. So there's some belief beginning there already. And uh, uh, especially John, he, he's really beginning this, this tour of belief that happens through our lives as, if we're Christians that we believe that Jesus is alive, that he's alive from the dead and lives with uh, our Father in heaven and will return for us. And uh, that's, that's my faith. That's my, my rock in my life is that Jesus, the risen one, will return and take me home to be with him. I'm excited about that for so many reasons. That reason because my sins are forgiven. That reason, because he's invested his spirit into my heart and into my life. That reason, so many reasons. For as yet, it goes on, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. There are passages in the Old Testament that really, if you take them as messianic or about Jesus, it, you've got to understand that Jesus is going to get up from the dead. The Old Testament tells you that. And so that's what John is saying here is, look, the, the scriptures we've studied all our lives as Hebrew boys are true. The, the Messiah is getting up from the dead, and Jesus did that. Uh, so the disciples went away again to their own homes. And, but Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. and So as she wept, she stooped, stooped and looked into the tomb. And uh, so she's hanging around the tomb. She, she doesn't know what's going on. She's confused. She's sorry. She's hurt that Jesus died. And it, it, it's pained her a great deal. And she, she, so she gets down and she looks inside the tomb. Maybe she's getting ready. She's one of these that's getting ready to, to complete the, the spicing of the body to make sure it's okay. But no, there's no Jesus there. It says, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where, where the body of Jesus had been lying. They said to her, woman... Why are you weeping? <laughs> oh, I imagine that's a pretty common feeling among the angels that morning, don't you? <laughs> Why would you be weeping? He is alive from the dead. Why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know there was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, <laughs> you know how it is. You know, if you get your mind set in a particular direction, it's pretty hard to get you awake. But that's this, Jesus stays at it. Uh, she says to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, 
<laughs> I think he said it kind of like that. <laughs> I don't know. But so that she would recognize him. Uh, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. So she knows this is the one I've been listening to all the time for the last several years. I've been following him everywhere. I've been hanging on everything he says. He's my teacher. And so that's what she says to him. Teacher, teacher. She's so excited that he's, he's there with her. Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. I can imagine the scene in my head, can you? You know, where she just so excited about Jesus being there that she just turns around and latches on to him. And, uh, and I just, I really feel that that's a part of that story. So Jesus tells her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren, say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. So then it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. And you have to re realize that when the Jews killed Jesus, uh, the reigning, ruling Jews, when they killed Jesus, they weren't after just Jesus. They were after his message, and his disciples maintained or retained that message, and they were uh, hunted as well, and so they were... Uh, so shutting their doors, making sure they weren't caught. And Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had showed them, said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. Uh, the disciples then rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And I, I would hope that all Christians begin to understand this that, look, it, if, if Jesus is someone you have received, he has missioned you as well. You have a mission to other people to share Jesus with them and help them to know that he is indeed the Lord and uh, that he can save uh, whoever you're talking to. And if they're already saved, hey, tell the story to one another. It's a wonderful, blessing thing. And uh, keep telling the news. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, perhaps for us it's not necessarily very easy to get that. Why did he breathe on them? Well, spirit in, uh, in Greek, uh, you, you, you know what a, like a, a, a pneumatic wrench is, right? It, or pneumonia or anything that has to do with air, that's the, that's the Greek root for spirit, pneuma. Uh, it's, it's breath, it's wind. And so when Jesus breathes on them, is there's something quite right about this, that Jesus breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. But Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. This is where we come to really the, the center of what I want to do this morning, the story of Thomas. So the other disciples were saying to him, we've seen the Lord. So this is what I suggest to you might be going on in Thomas's mind. So everybody's seen the Lord but me. And besides that, you all received the Holy Spirit. I'm beginning to feel a little left out here. Uh, he says to them, well, unless I see his hands in, the, and in, in, a, see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. You remember when we just read a few moments ago, that when Jesus showed up there for the other disciples, they could see the wounds. Uh, but he's, he's gone a little bit further. He says, I want to I actually stick my finger in there and be sure that's a real thing. He says, basically, he's going on in his mind again. I must have, have what you have. I've got to have what you have. Exactly what you have. I'm, I'm not going to be left out here. I have to have exactly what you have and maybe even a little bit more or I'm not going to believe. See, that's kind of where Thomas is. He, he says this. 
lest I see his, in his hands the imprint of the nails, put my finger in into the place of the nails, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, everybody else, uh, Mary Magdalene, for crying out loud, she's gotten to see the Lord, and, and the disciples have all gotten to see the Lord, and I haven't. I've got to see him, or I'm not believing. Is this you? <laughs> Do you have to have everything that everybody else has in order to be a Christian? Do you have to have the same experiences, the same insight, the same scripture that you know? Or can you just take what you have right now, your understanding that you have right now, and believe? Thomas refused to. After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. So about a week, week and a day later, they're all together again. This time, Thomas was in their midst. One of my favorite things about Thomas and the disciples is that even though Thomas won't believe, he says, I'm not doing it, I'm not believing. Even though he refuses to believe, and the others do believe. They know that they have seen Jesus. They know he's alive from the dead. Even though those two different things are going on, Thomas doesn't, they do. Thomas is still willing to meet with them, and they want Thomas to continue to meet with them. I would like that to teach us some. You know, that there are people who, who are struggling with their faith, and they, they have to have an opportunity to learn, and we need to be there and help them to have that opportunity and to do so. Uh, Jesus came, it says, while this, they met together, and there were all, in, eight days later, they're all together with Thomas. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. That's what he said last time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The first thing he said to him, peace be with you. Is this Jesus' first wish for everyone in this room? Or for everyone in every room? Is that his first wish for them? Peace be with you? I wonder. I think it is. I think it's, it's, it's something he wants for every single person. So if you find yourself this morning sitting there troubled and weary and, and hurting, Jesus wishes you to have peace. I'm sure of that. He wants you to have peace. And some of us need to grow up a bit about that. In other words, we've got all the faith, we've got all the knowledge, we've got all the sense that tells us, yes, Jesus wants me to have fit, uh, peace, but we just keep on worrying and and antsy and everything, instead of just saying, okay, no, peace can come home to me. It'll be all right. I'm going to accept that and the joy that comes with it, and I'm just going to be at peace. Peace be with you, Jesus says. Then he said to Thomas, uh, reach here your finger and see my hands. And reach here your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. As you wish, Thomas, everything you wanted, there it is. I, I wonder if we ask for signs sometimes, and then if they come, are we true to them? See, one thing I appreciate about Thomas is he did get what he wanted. He got exactly what he wanted. But something that you may not know about Thomas is that he became a missionary to people far, far away from him. Down to India, it is thought that he went to, to minister, and at last, when he died, he was uh, thrust through with a spear and died for his faith. Man, if you've been given great things, maybe great things will be demanded of you. Be not afraid. Be at peace. Travel on in the Lord. Do the mission he sends you on. I just love this painting because it's just so wonderful how uh, he's, he's, Jesus is just saying, yeah, come on now, put your finger in here like you said you was going to. <laughs> I want to show you right here. It's a real deal. This is my scar. This is my mark. Uh, you, just, you just go ahead and stick that finger right on in there. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. 
You know, Jesus tells him this. I don't know if Thomas actually did put his finger in Jesus' side. I don't know. But whatever he did, whether it was actually to do that or if he just said, man, that's enough for me. I got it. You are, you are who you say you are. You're the Lord and you're God. And I just love the, what Thomas says here because uh, he, he got it. He got the whole thing. He got that great confession that we look for. Uh, he got the lordship of Jesus, right? He said, you're Lord. And he got the divinity, right? He said, you're God. And the beautiful thing about uh, Thomas is he said it in fewer words than anybody else ever did. <laughs> Just that fast. My Lord and my God. Uh, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. You don't have to be a Thomas. I mean, my middle name actually is Thomas, really. And there is a space in my life where I was a bit of a, a, a type of doubting guy. I, I didn't do so well with my faith. And I struggled and I cried and I hurt. But God ministered to me through that time. And he has shown me that I, even though my middle name is Thomas, don't have to be Thomas of this nature that that what I was when I was eight and realized that this great good news was indeed great good news and I could obey it and be a Christian. See, that's what it is. That's what the simple uh, nature of being Christian is. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus, allowed him to die for your sins and raised him from the dead. Who could have done it but God? Believe. Let God be God. And all the goodness that is belong to him. Because this story, Jesus died for my sins, was buried, and was raised from the dead to prove I have eternal life. That's good news. And I believe God. When you believe this of God, when you say so and accept it, Something happens to you. Your life changes. You don't get to do the things you used to do all the time because now you have a different set of values. You ask yourself, well, if God loved me that much, doesn't my life have to love him? So if it does, then I need to make it so. And so some of the things have to go and some new things have to come. And I have to live for Jesus. When you believe this of God, when you say so, when you say, I believe it of Jesus, I believe it of God, when you say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, then it changes your life. It makes you want to do things for God. What can I offer? Well, what can I be? You color your days differently. I urge you, if you've made that decision for Jesus Christ, do so. Get the days uh, situated so that there's the Bible in front of you day by day, studying his word, knowing Jesus through the scriptures, through the prayer time, in the chamber uh, of, of, of privacy where nobody else is there but just you and the Lord. It makes you want to do things for God if you've really received that love that God has bestowed upon you through Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. Uh, and, but these, these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Yeah, uh, John is confessing. Look, I can't get it all in front of you. I can't only tell you, but just so much. But you got enough, see? You got enough. And you can believe. Don't wait for another sign. Today's the day. Now's the hour. Come now. He calls you to follow him today. So, start. Start today. Sandy's going to come up and play our invitation song for us, and we're going to stand. And if, so, if someone has a decision for Christ that you want to make today, we, we invite you to come. Don't be a, don't be a doubting Thomas. Uh, rest fully on his promise and uh, follow the Lord today. Let's stand together and sing our song of invitation. Out of my bondage.
sorrow and night. Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come into thy freedom, gladness and light. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of my sickness, into thy hell. Russell, who's come today, she has decided to give her life to Christ and to, in obedience, uh, receive baptism. I think we'll be doing that later. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, all right. Good. That's great. We're looking forward to that. And uh, Marissa, because you've just made this decision and uh, you're here in front of us, I want to give you this chance to say with me that I believe that Jesus is the Christ. Will you say that with me? Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> That's a great, great, we're so glad for your confession of faith. That's where we begin, yes. and we just continue on. And uh, I'm so excited for you. And uh, I need to, to say praise the Lord and congratulate you again. All right, I need to, to say the same thing to you, Walter. I need you to say this with me as well. I believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the living God. Son of the living, Son of the living God. All right, wonderful. I praise the Lord. Thank you for your confession of faith. Uh, Walter is going to be baptized this morning, so we're going to go take care of that. If you want to return to your seat, that will be great. So we're going to go take care of that now. I think I see you might have some music. Y'all want to turn in your books, we'll sing 169. We'll sing the first and last verse of it.
What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may, may increase? That's how Romans 6 starts. Far from it, how shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For the one who has died is freed from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. I'm so glad to have Walter step down here with me this morning and uh, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior and be baptized into him. Step right on down there. There you go. Excellent. I have a seat. Walter, upon your confession of faith, because you believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ, rise to walk in newness of life. Yeah. We help you yeah. There's pals right there. Now, Jesus, Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time but for eternity. Let's have some prayer together, and uh, then we'll, you can be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the joy of looking on someone else getting baptized and thinking to ourselves, I there once went myself, and I was so glad that I did, and am today. And so I can rejoice in seeing this one uh, committed to the Lord uh, made the one that belongs to Jesus and Jesus to him. We praise you for this, God, and we thank you so much. From the depth of our hearts, we say thank you. We pray, Father, that you give us wisdom and guidance as a church that wants to be uh, the home and a bit of a mother to this one to help him to grow and to, and to become what he needs to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be with his family as they uh, grow alongside of him and help him uh, help him to stay steady and true in his faith. And I just pray that you will uh, bring these things about as we look for them and long for them. We, we love you, Lord, and we praise you for what you're doing in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God, brother.